Well, hello, hello, and welcome back. So I know that generally on this channel, we focus more on hardware samplers and old school production techniques, but I thought today, let's do something a little bit different. Let's hop into Ableton Live and make a track. Now we'll still use a lot of old school techniques and ultimately aim to achieve a more retro sound, but using the advantages that come with a modern DAW. Now I don't know about you, but lately, the late 90s, early 2000s atmospheric jungle music has been my absolute obsession. So let's do a track like that. Starting off with the classic, ubiquitous, always timeless, aim and break. Let's dive in. You may have noticed our Amen sounds slightly fast. The reason for that was sound quality. The less warping we have to do, the less artifacts are left behind. After recording the break, we just warped the kicks and snares to the grid, leaving Gregory Coleman's natural swing intact. Rest in peace to the legend. So with our Amen's kicks and snares locked to the grid, let's make our pattern. Now we could load the break into simpler or sampler, but honestly, I prefer just dealing with a straight up audio waveform right on the timeline. The reason for that is I find it gives us a lot more flexibility when it comes to things like reversing a sample, stretching out a random hit, creating little stutters or pauses within the drums, any sort of flexing on the sampling, which in jungle, we tend to do a lot of. So let's jump in there. After rearranging the break, we arrived at this pattern. Mirroring the Amen pattern, we added a subby kick, punchy snare, and a snap. Altogether, our drums sound like this. So we'll freak out the drums later on, but at this point, we need to create the vibe of the track by introducing some harmony. So I'll be honest with you, my music theory is not the best. Sit me down in front of a keyboard that doesn't have a scale mode, and it's a frightening sight, we're not even gonna get into it. But basically what I'll do is I'll kind of play around in the keys a little bit until I find a nice root note, and that's where I set my scale to. Then I'll just kind of pick either the major or the minor of that scale, use this chart here to find a nice chord, and from there I kind of just copy paste that chord a few times, shift it up or down a couple notes, lengthen, shorten, and just find a nice progression. Let's do it. For this genre, we want pads that have an ethereal and almost angelic sound, and then using dense jazzy chords. This lays a perfect bedding for the fast, intricate drums. Slightly altering the Dreamwash preset on Arturia's CZV, we found our main synth layer. For extra weight and depth, we layered an altered version of the Classic Roads preset from the June 6V. Played together, it creates a beautiful soundscape. With our progression in place, it's time for some low end. We kept the bass pretty simple, opened up Massive, and made a classic Reese bass. 
you want to feel the sub on bigger speakers while still having a bit of bite coming through on phones and laptops. Melody wise, we mostly just mirrored the chord progression, with a few slides thrown in for movement. With our track really taking shape, let's add some extra melodic content. As the track moves along, we'll obviously want to be adding some more melodic content to keep it interesting. For this, we added a whistle lead using the Arturia Prophet V3, then a glassy chord stab courtesy of the DX7V, and finally some high-pitched plucky keys off of the DX7V as well. Putting these alongside our main chords, we have this. Now that we have all our parts, we're ready for the finishing touches. We'll start by doing basic sequencing. Choosing the intro, then bar by bar, figuring out what we want to play and where. We'll draw an automation of the volumes, filter cutoffs, and anything else that makes the blends between bars seamless. To add a bit of urgency and excitement, we place an airy crash about every 16 bars. Then taking a rap acapella, we chopped out little bits and pieces, placing them all over the track at low volumes with lots of delay, just to add little bits of ear candy. Then lastly, to keep the drums from getting too repetitive, we did things like stretching out certain hits, changing pitches, creating stutters, and so on. And with all this done, it's on to the mastering. I'm not going to get super in depth on mastering in this video, but basically, I start by sidechaining everything to the kick. Then doing a little bit of EQ on the track, adding a slight amount of bus compression, isotope ozone for stereo widening and some limiting, and lastly, a color limiter for a final bit of saturation and boost. This has my levels and tonal balance right where I want it. All right, and that's a wrap. What'd you think? I'm super into this track and I can't wait to flush it out and make it a full piece. But in the meantime, I did go through some of these techniques pretty quickly. So if you want a full video on any one of them, let me know down in the comments. But in the meantime, I'm pretty hungry. I got a pizza on the way. So until next time, cheers.